Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is the best comic book movie I've seen since probably either Wakanda Forever, No Way Home, or Endgame. It is absolutely 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10 movie. It is amazing. It is the best animated project I've seen probably within the last 10 years since the last Spider-Verse movie. It is so, so fantastic. Easily an 11 out of 10. And if you don't want to get spoiled by this, go watch it for yourself. You will not be disappointed as a comic fan, as a moviegoer fan, and as just a fan of movies in general. It is such a time. It is awesome. Now, the spoilers won't be too, too heavy. So you can certainly watch this and still go in and still be absolutely in awe of this entire thing. Because we first start the movie with Gwen and Gwen's whole backstory and what she's up to and with her dad and how she probably lost Peter and so on. Right off the bat, amazing trans rep with the trans flag and the protect trans kids. Awesome. Love it to death. Fantastic. And we also were already hinted at what happened with Peter from the first movie, if you didn't know the whole story of Spider-Man from the comics, you know, the silhouette changing and then so on and so forth, and the light scales, it hinted at it if you didn't know or couldn't catch on. This movie outright confirms it. Then there's the Vulture, and the, the, Vul and the Vulture's design in this movie is so cool. The whole, like, parchment Da Vinci kind of thing, almost looking like blueprints and the splashes, look like blueprints like devices and diagrams so good it's just that entire first scene where she's fighting against the da vinci vulture and then 2099 comes in miguel o'hara himself comes in with just one of the most baller themes ever especially as a fan of spider-man unlimited you can clearly hear the like inspiration of Spider-Man Unlimited and we get to see Spider-Man Unlimited as a cameo later on in the film there is so much inspiration for him from the original cartoon get, taking inspiration from 2099 and now this 2099 taking inspiration from that especially with the cape and so on oh my oh my goodness Miguel is just awesome and then seeing the silhouette of his fangs and then also seeing Jess Drew fantastic i love how she's on her motorcycle and so on and then the way she uses her webs and she's just a great character overall but then we cut to miles in 1610 being that earth's one and only spider-man in brooklyn and he's trying to live a double life he's trying to balance that out he's trying to go in between being miles the 15 year old sophomore in high school Versus being Spider-Man, Brooklyn's one and only Spider-Man, and trying to live that double life. That first scene with Spot trying to rob the Jamaican store was just so funny. So, so funny. Because immediately you get the idea that he's a sympathetic villain, but he's also really goofy. He's played up and even mentioned to be like, oh, you're just a villain of the week. And good lord, does he take that personally. And... Becomes an Avengers level threat by the end of the movie. Just wow. Wow. Um, Miles and his is like. Like fight. Using portals and so on. And then their like dichotomy. And their whole. <laughs> like relationship between each other. And the way that they're. Just playing off of each other. Making quips. It's so funny. So so funny. Spot is just. Is great. Also if you've seen the movie. Bagel effect is real. That's all I gotta say. Then we cut to Miles going in for like college applications and then going to stuff such as to his dad's captain ceremony, being promoted to captain of the police force or the PDNY in 1610 instead of NYPD. And Gwen comes along and meets up with miles for the first time we see that miles has either been crushing or been kind of infatuated and just you know thinking about her a lot which i will say makes sense if they get together i won't be mad and if they don't get together i also won't be mad 
because it feels very fluid. It feels genuine. It feels realistic because Gwen is a friend of Miles that is actually his age because after he moved and got into the new school, he didn't have any friends except for the other spider people and they weren't around and Gwen was the closest to his age. Penny was younger than him and then there's Spider-Ham who is Spider-Ham, obviously Cartoon Pig and then there's Peter B who is, you know, as Spider-Punk ends up going around, the humbling universe Spider-Man. So there's that whole thing and then there's Noir, right? And... Noir is, he's old. <laughs> he's hes very eccentric. He's hes strange. You know, can't really be a 15-year-old being friends with Noir like you would with someone your age like Gwen. So I obviously understand the relationship. I obviously really, really like it. I enjoy it a lot. Cutting back to this, they go after Miles' dad's party and obviously they have a little bit of a falling out they have an argument they go to the spider hq and i just gotta say the sheer amount of references i was in awe watching the screen it was it was so much so so much but so so beautiful from the hijabi representation to paviter pabakar to, you know, Sunspot with the disabled rep, and then, you know, some of the other, like, call-outs in the background, such as the Bulletproof Armor, Spider-Man, then there's also Spectacular, you see, Unlimited, I think you even catch a glimpse of, like, I saw a screenshot where there's the fucking Popsicle, then there's the Plushie, then there's the Dinosaur, oh, so, so much representation and so many cameos, and I don't want to spoil all of them, but oh my god, the blending of mediums. Oh, it's awe-inspiring. It's beautiful. It's so, so good. The chase scene is was beautiful, and then the whole thing with Spider-Punk and Pavita Prabhakar's um, whole Earth and Mubatan, and wow, I have to mention, Spider-Punk is so so uniquely spider-man his whole punk aesthetic and attitude is something that i can very much relate to especially as somebody that you know aligns themselves and kind of self-identifies as a punk so love that love that a lot and his jokes and his quips are so uniquely spider-man his whole non-conformity thing and being your truest self standing up against oppression and standing up for the little guy and so on is so uniquely spider-man with a twist that doesn't stray too far from all the other spider-man and i love that i love that they kept the core meaning of spider-man and just the entire movie really feels like it's just a testament to the whole anyone can wear the mask love it so much but as we're in the spider like nexus hq we get to meet peter b and then we get to meet uh a few others you know spider bite all of them are great and then we're introduced to the canon events and then we're introduced to the main conflict of the story and that's that miles does not fit in he is an anomaly we go through more and more and more and then we get to spot and spot is just terrifying by the end of the movie it's wow peter helping miles was was beautiful because it's true without <laughs> without miles peter b wouldn't have mayday mayday's also adorable by the way love it and we get to see that maybe can events can not happen and they're away from the norm and from the whole timeline of like the spider story and they don't always result in bad things the movie is excellently long and it stays its welcome fantastically and i i want there to be more of the movie to watch and i've heard that there's been cut scenes i want to see some of the cut scenes i think they'd be good but some of the cut scenes i've heard are like you know dragging on a little bit too much that they wouldn't add a lot to it and i cannot wait for beyond the spider verse that twist at the end wow wow i saw it coming from a mile away as soon as 
the thing happens that you see, but still, I want more. I want more so much. And that's where I get into the ending wrap-up of this review. This movie is just, just fantastic. I have a theory that the next movie, either A, Miguel's going to sacrifice himself for the Spider-Verse, B, Miles' dad is going to bite the dust, and Miles will learn that he can't save everyone, but the fact that he tried proves a canon event or he prevents it or he saves the spider-verse in some way shape or form right it's not just going to be oh i get to say both it's going to be a little bit more complicated than that and i just got to mention it is beautiful the fact that there are going to be kids nowadays that think of spider-man and they're going to be thinking of miles or they're going to be thinking of someone like Paviter, or they're going to be speaking of somebody like sunspot whenever their mind goes to spider-man it will be of someone that they can relate to and i love that it is so so beautiful and i love it so much because as somebody that grew up with spider-man spider-man wasn't always the most relatable to me but whenever he was relatable to me such as certain interpretations of Miles, you know, seeing the original Into the Spider-Verse, Miles was incredibly relatable to me. I felt a connection with, you know, Miles' story, much like how I felt a connection to, you know, Spectacular Spider-Man's story or someone like uh, Ultimate Spider-Man in the comics and so on, like that very much teenage story of struggle trying to find yourself. I deeply related to that, like... And seeing that now be carried on of relatability of anyone can wear the mask. As long as you try to do your best, that's what matters, is awesome. It is awesome. But yeah, I would give it a hardly, hard, hard, hard 10 out of 10. It is a must-see. It is an Oscar like nominee easily. And you all should go and try and watch it. But let me know about your thoughts of the movie down in the comments down below. And while you're down there, leave a like. And if you want to see more, click subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of every single time that I upload. I upload literally any and everything on this channel, from gaming to reviews to whatever I want. But yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye.